we established that the how Rabbi Salvechik this uh, refers to the Ten Commandments. I want to do just show a few things about the Ten Commandments, just the way they're written, uh, literally written, and they'll show just the importance of the Ten Commandments. So whenever you want to, whenever we want to look at the importance of the way they're written. We look at scribal areas. We look to the commentary of the Balaturim, the 14th century commentary. So the first thing you, I, I want to point out, the, the introductory verse to the Ten Commandments, it says, that God spoke all of these words saying. And then that verse has a numerical value, which is called a gematria. The numerical value of that of that verse is thirteen thirty two. By the way, gematria is not just something simple. It's 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 where we assign a, a numerical value to each letter of the alphabet, and then we figure out deeper lessons. And the Talmud uh, defy um, the Talmud in two cases. In the Talmud, actually derives actual halachot, actual laws from this. One relates to the Nazir, and one relates to the oil that was used and the anointing but this is the numerical value of this opening verse the balaturim points out is equal to the phrase the phrase that everything which is written everything which was in writing and the oral tradition that hints to the fact that the, that the ten commandments contains the entire torah in them okay that's the first point i wanted to point out and it hints to the fact that the Ten Commandments contains everything in it. And then, and then the next thing I wanted to point out is the following: that when we come to the word lo sisa, that you're not allowed to take God's name in vain, in verse seven of the Ten Commandments, chapter twenty, verse seven, it says lo sisa shem al kecho hashav. I always like to show this that there are scribal traditions that Balaturim points out, al shin zayin tagen. There are seven crowns. Normally a shin has three crowns, but there are three heads on the letter shin. So the Balaturim says you have to put on the other two heads, two crowns on this letter. So you should have lo sisa, should have seven crowns on it. And, and, this corresponds to the seven times the word kazav, false, is mentioned in the word exodus. So actually, uh, so it appears seven times. So we're talking about the word false, and you need seven crowns for that to remind us of that. And the seven sins, it also corresponds to the seven sins mentioned in the tochacha, and the seven times the word your sins is spelled in full. The seven names of the Yetzer Hara, the evil inclination, and the seven levels of Gehenim. There's seven levels of hell. If anybody asks you how many levels of hell there are, there are seven names. The Talmud in Erevin 19a lists the seven names Sha'ol, Avadon, Be'er Shachat, Bor Sha'on, Salmaves, and Tita Yavain, and Eretz Tachtit. So those are the seven levels of hell. and and the seven seven names of the eight Sahar of the evil inclination are Ra, evil, Arel, uncircumcised, Tame, unclean. Anyway, we go on. Okay, so that's the, I just wanted to point that out, that scriptural, that scribal oddity of, of seven crowns on Ulusi Sah. Now, this tradition actually is not, is not the Ashkenazic tradition. So today when we write a Torah, we don't make seven crowns on this letter, but the Balaturim was recording this tradition. Now we come up to the next verse. That's where we start to get really cute. So the verse, Zachor et Yom HaShabbat Kacho, remember the Shabbat to keep it holy. This, this verse has five words on it. But this is, this is what the Balaturim writes. He says, this verse is the seventh verse of the Ten Commandments, and it begins with the letter Zion. Zachor begins with Zion, which is the seventh letter of the alphabet. And it begins with that letter because Shabbat is the seventh day. And there are seven subjects when the, that the Torah refers to as having to keep the Shabbos. 
Atah you, Bincha is your son, Bitecha your daughter, Abdecha your servant, Amatcha your female servant, Bemtecha, Bemtecha your animal, Vigercha and the stranger that's in your midst. So, th- so, so there are seven subjects, seven, the seventh letter on the seventh day and the seventh verse of the Ten Commandments. Now, and the sages instituted that corresponding to this in the Mincha on Shabbat afternoon, the word Minucha appears seven times. So that, if anybody ever, ever wonders, why do we have this word Minucha in our prayers so many times? That's why. Just give me one moment. I want to just say what the Baal Turim says. I'll come right back to you, Bruce. Just give me a minute. I'll come right back to you, Buine or April, whoever. Um, either one. I'm really excited to hear it. But I just want to finish what he says because now he's getting, the Baal Turim is just warming up. Then he says, there are five words in this verse. Zachor, Yom HaShabbat L'Kad Show. Remember the Shabbat and keep it holy. Five Hebrew words. That's to tell us that whoever keeps the Shabbos, it's as though you have kept the five books of the Torah. Now, the next commandment is honor your father and your mother. And so the Balaturim says the Torah places, remember the Shabbos next to the commandment to honor your father and your mother. And to tell you that the Balaturim writes, tell you, They're just like you have an obligation to honor the Shabbos. You have an obligation to honor your father and mother. So this is different than what Rashi says. Rashi says, why is Shabbos in the same phrase as honoring your father and mother? It's just, let's say your father and mother tell you not to honor the Shabbos. And you're allowed to say to your parents, I don't have to listen to you because the same God that told me to listen to you told me to keep the Shabbos. That's what Rashi says. But here the Baal Turim tells you that you have to honor the Shabbos just like you honor your father and mother. Meaning to say, you have an obligation to honor somebody's parents with food and drink and proper clothing. And so too, one is obligated to honor the Shabbos in this manner by dressing differently on the Shabbos, eating different foods on the Shabbos. That's the responsibility. Then, the next very interesting thing is it says, if you honor your father or mother, you will have the the Ten Commandments says, Laman Yarichun, Yamecha, you'll have the length of days. But this word Ya'arichun is written defective, meaning to say it is missing a vav. That it is it is missing, it's missing a letter. It's missing a letter. Now this is ironic because the, the, it says the yud. It's missing the second yud. So the word you will have length of days is is written defective. That it's missing a letter. And the Baal Turim explains that's because you're going to have length of days, but not in this world, but only in the world to come. Uh, and and so therefore, therefore it's missing this letter. Now we come to the sixth commandment, lo tirzach, and Rash and Baal Turim tells us that the sixth commandment contains six letters. Lo tirzach, thou shalt not murder, to tell you that it prohibits killing man who was created on the sixth day. So he's, the Baal Turim is just seating up here with everything. And these are not only messages, these are ways in which we can remember it. And then the Baal Turim writes as follows. The, the Ten Commandments begin with the letter Aleph, Anochi, and they end with the letter chaf, l'reyacha. And you're not allowed to covet what belongs to your friend. And this is to teach us that this, this spells the word ach, truly. Meaning to say that if you keep these commandments, it will be truly good for Israel, for the Jewish people. And then the Baal Turim writes that the Ten Commandments have 620 letters. 620 letters. And this corresponds to the 613 commandments and then the seven Noahide laws. And the way to uh, remember them is Keter Torah, which the numerical value of the word Keter is also 620. Those are the crowns on the Torah. 
And this teaches us that if a person studies the Torah with the proper intent, the study becomes a ket or a crown upon his head. But if he studies with an improper intent, then we rearrange the letters keter and we spell the letter karet, which is a severe penalty from heaven. By the way, there is, we should point out, there's something that's called an improper intent and also without intent, without the proper intent. Without the proper intent is okay, because if you study without the proper intent, you could eventually come to study with the proper intent. But if you study with an improper intent, with an aggressively improper intent, like you're studying Torah, for example, to learn how to steal from other people, you learn the loopholes of the Torah about how to steal from people, then you're actually doing a tremendous sin. And then the last thing I wanted to say from the Balaturim, and then we're going to go back to the questions that were raised, is that the Balaturim writes, there are 172 words in the Ten Commandments. Minyan Akev. There are 172 words in the Ten Commandments. This is what Eliezer hints to when he says he gave Rebecca a weight that was a Becca Mishkalo and two gold bracelets. This symbolizes the two tablets, the ten golden shekels, symbolizing the Ten Commandments. So, so anyway, he cites the verses that relate to that, but we see from here just the power of each letter and each word of the Ten Commandments, and how the Balaturim connects it to the very powerful, very powerful messages. Okay, let me just pause the recording for a moment, and then we will take a question.